you all. We won't be here too long today. I know y'all ready for y'all barbecue and y'all hot dogs and smoked sausage. I thought some of y'all were gonna come in the building with them. <laughs> so I'm a hot with to all y'all that got smoked sausage and barbecue and didn't bring none. Cause somebody talking about a seafood bro or something today. <laughs> So I, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for some cute. I'm talking about messy cute to get all over your clothes, you can lick in your hands and your fingers and everything. Uh, uh, Janisha and Melanie I, and, and Trace, I told Tammy about uh, that I'm going to have an extreme administrative need. So if y'all got any sisters, roadies, homies, besties that's looking for a job right through here that knows the Microsoft Office Suite, uh, I need some help quick. So if you know somebody that's uh, been out of a job and uh, uh, this may be their breakthrough. Amen. So uh, so uh, I'm gonna spread the word, y'all spread the word. Uh, so we're in a different day right now, man. So, yeah, so bow your heads with me. Father, I thank you in advance for clarity of thought. Father, I thank you for soundness of speech. Father, I thank you for the anointing that destroys every yoke and removes every burden. Father, I thank you for the anointing that makes preaching, teaching, and speaking easy. Lord, we pray that you let there be none of me and all of you. And the ever mind for give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise, and the matchless name of your son, Jesus. Amen. In keeping with what this day is, our text comes from Paul's letter to the church of Galatia, Galatians 5, verse 1. My guy over here, he know. Oh, he just flew in. Okay. Galatians 5, verse 1. Galatians 5, verse 1. It reads, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Galatians, that from the NIV, it said, it is freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not, do not let ourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Any of y'all want to be free? Uh, New Living Translation, so Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free. <clears throat> and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. Uh, for a few minutes on this 4th of July, we will celebrate not only the anniversary of America's independence, but we will also proclaim that this is your day of independence. This is your day of independence. So claim that, make that thing yours. This is my day of independence. Boy, that, that was real week. One more time. That this is my day of independence. This is my day of independence. The Apostle Paul in writing to the church at Galatia in this text said, Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. That word liberty in the Greek is eleuthera. It means freedom from slavery, absence of external restraint, independence, a negation of control or dominated. Nobody dominating you when you're really free, and freedom of access. The clarion call from the Apostle Paul in this specific text that he exalted so powerfully is listen to this, is liberty in Jesus Christ. The legalistic believers of this day were called the Judaizers, and they taught that, that, so, they taught that certain Old Testament laws were still binding on the church. The Judaizers reason that God's promise extends only to the Jews, and that Gentiles must be circumcised before they can fully experience salvation. The Judaizers did not deny that faith in Jesus was necessary, but they taught that faith in Jesus alone was inadequate. They insisted that one must add faith to the observance of the law. 
Paul in writing to this church insisted that salvation was by grace through faith. Yes. The Judaizers were critical of Paul's new lifestyle where Paul boldly spoke out about being free from religious bondage. Why would in the world, folks, would anyone desire to go back into bondage? My brothers and sisters in Christ, I have known bondage and chains in the world. So why would I want to go back to that in the church? Saints of God, I can boldly tell you that I'm a free believer. I went through enough struggles in the world that I'm not going to allow you to put Oh, ooh, I felt that song right there. They went all the way back to them rap They them shackles on my feet. <laughs> they said shackles on my feet and shackles on my mind. I don't know. I just caught a rap spirit right there. So y'all help me through here. And said, I went through enough struggles in the world that I'm not going to allow you to put me back in chains in the church. Yeah. Several years back, there was a powerful song called Break Every Chain. Yeah. Its lyrics went as follows. Uh, uh, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Say there is power in the name of Jesus. Come on. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. To break every chain. To break every chain. To break every chain. Let's say it together. There is power in the name of Jesus. Saints, if Jesus broke every chain, why would you ever allow someone, something, or some church to put you back into bondage? Saints, most of us grew up hell scared. I know some of y'all talked about uh, the goodness of the Lord and that brought you to the Lord, but I grew up hell scared. For everything, we went to hell. You went and played marbles, you going to hell. You watching the television, you going to hell. I was hell scared. Uh, the, we, I joined church when that evangelist painted such a great picture of hell and I knew I didn't want my feet there. That's how I came to God. For doing this for doing this we are so often that we heard so much about going to hell. We grew up hell scared so much that we often forget that Jesus died to make us free. Paul spoke against the legalistic yokes that the Judaizers desired to put upon people. We have people like that in this day. There are some places where you better not smile, crack a joke, be a woman wearing pants, uh, be a woman wearing lipstick, or be a woman wearing makeup. Uh, we still have legalistic church folks today. Deborah and I once went to hear a speaker at a local apostolic church. Uh, Deborah doesn't wear a lot of makeup. She had on some lipstick and maybe a few other makeup essentials. So the usher walks us in to find seats in the church. She then sits us and seats me prominently and she put Deborah behind the pole. She put her behind the pole. She allowed me to hear this speaker, but I knew that she wasn't happy. While I'm in the service, I'm dreading about driving home with an unhappy wife after the service. All of a sudden, I looked around the congregation, and I noticed that so many of these no makeup wearing, no lipstick wearing, just ashy, holy looking sisters, all of them had arm babies. Not one of them had a ring on their fingers. So they were big Big on no makeup, big on no lipstick, big on the lip of their dress, but maybe they weren't big on abstinence. They were big on some other things. You, you hear what I'm saying? They were holy up here, but mm, not always holy. So don't let people put you in chains. I'm telling you that you can be a woman that wears pants and make it to glory. I heard Bishop G.E. said that he knows some women that wear dress that rub the floor. That rub the floor. That can pull them up so fast that the woman in the jeans, in her jeans, might pull them up a little slower. Uh, I, that, that's G.E. He gone. Don't blame it on me. <laughs> One of the biggest deliverances I found out in life, listen to this, y'all. The biggest deliverance in life you can ever receive is a deliverance from people. Yeah, okay. A deliverance from folks. A deliverance 
from their opinions. I know that we preach it that it's holiness of hell, but how many people have been sent to hell just because they didn't wear the hair, their, their hair, their clothes, their skirts, and their makeup like legalistic people wanted to, them to? Salvation, folks, listen, is an inside job. It's not what you wear on the outside that determines your deliverance through Christ, but it's what's going on the in, on your insides that determines your deliverance. That's why this preacher doesn't preach clothes. Did you hear me? I don't preach clothes. One more time. I don't preach clothes. But don't y'all take it too far. Don't y'all come in and holler if you hear me clothes on next week. Now, don't do that. Cause that ain't your freedom to do that. But I don't preach clothes. However, every now and then, I, I got to give it to you. The spirit might let you know. Uh, uh, I, uh, it might let you know that maybe you shouldn't put that there on. That's the end of that discourse. God wants us free. God wants us to be independent. God wants us out of chains. God wants us out of the grips of bondage. God wants you to experience the, the spirit of liberty. I know some holiness church where ain't nobody smiling. They say, come and worship the Lord and the beauty of, this, the beauty of holiness. And everybody in there look like they sucking on a sour lemon. <laughs> Too much holiness. <laughs> some makeup might do you look good. Some makeup might do you a little bit. Uh, I know y'all gonna put me out the church now. Who's got time to always be deep and holy looking all the time? I had a guy try to describe me this week. He said, Steve got a little old dry sense of humor. And I know he that just hate a because I got a whole lot of personality. I've been the life of the party. And listen to this, y'all. Y'all gonna be shocked. You all's pastor has a standing invitation to chuckles. They still wait for me to come. They keep inviting me. Keep inviting me. But I'm trying to, when I go that first day, I'm going to let y'all know that the pastor over here at Chuckles, <laughs> y'all pray for me. One day I'm going to do it now. They keep daring me. They keep daring me and keep inviting me. I'm going to be right there at Chuckles, right after said the entertainer. They're going to say, Steve the preacher. <laughs> so, folks, I'm telling you that you don't have to be deep. You don't have to be holy. You don't be, have to be super spiritual. That kills our witness sometimes yeah. because we're so heavenly minded that we're no earthly what? Good. 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 It's time for us to walk in the freedom that Christ has purchased for us. We can allow people, we can't allow people to put out their legalistic rules on us. I know that holiness has a standard, but some of this stuff, holiness folks come out the bag with, you have to resist. Why aren't our messages filled with sermons about the grace of God? That word grace spells out G-R-A-C-E. Let me give you an acronym for that. God's riches at Christ's expense. Romans 3 verse 23 states, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Saints, some like me have missed it by a holy mile. And I know some of y'all missed by inches, but we all missed it. Yet all of us have fallen short of the standard that God has set for us. Saints, we are all marked misses. Saints, we are all missed it before. Saints, God didn't call us to rules, but he did call us to relationship. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Saints, it's not about our clothes, our habits, our customs, our traditions, our religious norms, our tongues, our tambourines, or our holy book, but we are free because the price that Christ paid for us. The scriptures declare that without the shedding of blood that there's no remission of sin. Saints, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. The late Milton Brunson had a song. He wrote, I'm free. And the lyrics are as follows. I'm free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, I'm free. Saints, it's our day of independence. Let me call 
the eagle eyed prophet to the stand as now we close. Let's ride. I'm ready to ride. It says this in Isaiah 10, verse 27. Isaiah wrote, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken off from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointed. Saints, God has destroyed the yokes because of the anointed. Many of the yokes we contended with for so long. Why would any of us run back to a yoke of bondage? This is our day of independence. Saints, I feel the chains breaking. Saints, I've been a slave to sin. Why would I choose to be in bondage inside of the church? Saints, you're free now. Why would you allow works and legalism to become your new slave master? Saints, this is your moment. I need you to declare that the chains are broken. Let me hear you say it. My chains are broken. Come on, declare in the spirit that your chains are broken by the power that is in the name of Jesus. Every chain of bondage, every chain of sickness, every chain of disease, we command it for it to be broken right now by the power in the name of Jesus. Somebody scream that name. Say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Somebody scream the name Jesus. Hey, Jesus, we need you. I hear the chains falling. Falling, yes, they are. I hear the chains falling. I say, I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. Somebody reach it now. Say, I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. The things that you used to be caught up with, and you getting delivered. Deliverance is coming in the room. I'm telling you, I don't care what habit had you. I know you had a case of the can't help us. But God just walked in here on today and freed you from that day. Right now, God's got a history of what G.E. said a long time ago. He said that Jesus is a habit breaker. I don't care what your habit is. You may want to go to the wrong place, smoke the wrong thing, sleep with the wrong person. But I'm telling you that God came in here to deliver you on today. I'm not going to be bound with your ghost. God did too much. I was the one that they predicted that we're going to even live to 30. And the other night, I, I were under a couple months back, I made it to 55. When he got engaged, the folks said they ain't going to make it through the weekend. And on last week, we just celebrated 30 years of marriage. And all the folks who said we weren't going to make it, they've been married five times. They've been married six times. And another, Jack and Riddle, saints of God, if you trust God, God can do it. Don't let them put a yoke on them. You may not look like they want you to look. You may not dress like they want you to dress. But I'm telling you, Get a big surprise when we go to glory, and we gon' be in there with folks with tattoos. We gon' be in there with folks in rings in their noses. We gon' be in there with rings in their eyebrows. Saints of God, and we gon' look back at some of these folks with dresses dragging the floor. Gonna be on their way to hell. Saints of God.
sheer grace of God, if God didn't do it, I wouldn't be here. I wasn't everybody's pig, but I'm glad to be chosen in him before the foundations of the world.